yeah, that'll be a that'll be a packed day for me. But no, no, stop! I'm not talking to you. I'm not, we're not, that's fine. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. Please go in the pool. We're about, we're technically we're recording now. So you're on, you're on the recording, but. This is the intro, by the way. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew. I'm here to talk to Cyprian and Father Turbo tonight for as long as I want to about what are you guys, I don't have a question set, but so what are you guys listening to right now? What music have you guys been jamming on recently? Um, there's been a, this neo new wave of British metal band, like NNW. EOM. Heavy British metal, yeah. yeah. Neo New Wave, right? Um, double N. Double N. Um, Witch Hazel. Witch Hazel. Dude, yeah. you scared them. It's so good. It's so good. It's, it's, been, it's been great. It's, well, it's been really, really great. Super, you got to talk now because I got to add them onto the, the playlist. <laughs> you know what is so weird? It's funny that you bring that up, or maybe it's like, perfect that you bring that up my life has been strangely which is actually notable it's been strangely devoid of music over the past like three weeks i don't know what that's all about it's very very strange Hmm. it's not strange no tell me Mm, no um I have found that going in and it's very hard to go deeper into certain things. And I mean, music's great, but it, it can really kind of like cloud the noose and get you like easily distracted. Um, and so often, like if you're in a heavy season of prayer, or trying to make some movement, that makes sense. Also too, when there's a season of preparation, um, like something's coming, you know, you'll feel that need for like radio silence, pun intended. Hmm. So, you know, in my case, um, I've been needing a little bit of extra. Mm, so you think about witch hazel is it's, uh, it's very, Christian, right. What's that? Are they Christian? Yeah. Yeah. It's Christian, really good lyrics. Um, and it's a much more, um, it's much more, it's much brighter than what I'm used to. Um, you know, I'm pretty doomy and in, in the minor stuff. And it's just been kind of like what I've needed because I've been in an interesting season. Um, so I just find that like things kind of come to you when you need them, you snack on them. And then, you know, if you're paying attention and, and just staying plugged in and keeping your, your hand to the plow, um, you know, you take your breather, you wipe your brow, you put the you put the snack down and you, you start plowing again. So um, I anticipate I probably will have radio silence probably starting, you know, tonight, tomorrow. I, I mean, um, I put on some Warpath music tonight um, before we started. So Witch Hazel has been good. It's been giving me some, you know, like I said, it's been a little snack, but um. Yeah, I just think those movements, I've observed them. So I don't think it's that strange to me at all. You know, I also have had, like, today is really the first day. It's interesting. Like, now it's getting me to think, I'm glad you asked that, Andrew. Like, you're like, you didn't have anything prepared, but I'm glad you asked it. Nice. Like, I don't know if you could tell last week, but my voice was kind of weird. Like, it's recovering now. Mm. I had, like, a weird... Like, I, I don't know, I wasn't sick or anything. I've never had like a laryngitis thing, you know, like that sure I'll strain my, I've strained my voice before and then, you know, but this was like 
something weird going on. And like, I really, I like to chant my prayer rule. You know what I mean? And like, then we, then we have, you know, when we have Tipica here and all of that, like I couldn't, I couldn't chant. I couldn't sing. Still, I'm having a really difficult time with it. Um, so there were times when my prayer rule was like almost, almost silent, like last week, you know, and it's just like, and then no music as well. And it's like, wow, I'm just noticing that. So yeah, something's going on, but I did, but I, I had this feeling of like, when I come out, what's that? What is it? Buckle up. I know. Well, I had this feeling like, okay, whatever this is, when I come out of it, so, like it's going to be like four to the floor, like time to go right now. This is the feeling that I've had as this has been going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very mm, yeah. weird. I, I mean, a lot of stuff is happening right now. A lot of stuff is happening right now. Big, big shifts are happening. Um, all, I mean, they have been. Um, for like obviously the last three years, big shifts are happening. And uh, the lull and the quiet that everyone's been experiencing, it's about to come to an end, so. On that note, Andrew, <laughs> Andrew what are you listening to? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, um, well, you know, I've been on kind of like a radio silence thing too for, probably like the last six to nine months and it, i i can just tell what it is what it is like and in that time like i kind of always just listen to the old standbys like i probably got like five or like five or ten artists that i always kind of been just jamming out to always um but uh when i first kind of started to realize that i couldn't listen to music all the time anymore like um a couple of years ago or whatever uh a couple of brothers from the church who have been into ambient stuff for a long time got me into some ambient artists and that's really nice to have on in the background i've noticed i have this like real love for like really like smoky noir -y jazz um that is like there's this playlist on youtube called like one hour of doomer jazz and it shows this like NPC smoking in a taxi, like with like the New York, like some street in New York, like whatever behind them. Um, I've been really into that. Uh, then there's these stupid little like YouTube channels where it's like a radio is playing in the other room, but there's crickets and stuff. Like I oh yeah, I know those. Yeah, I those are kind of cool actually. I love having those on at work. We have this big stupid flat screen TV in my office. And I just like sometimes while I'm doing data entry, but um, aside from that, and then the odd here and there, like the last two days, it happens to me probably once every couple months. I've been really digging into uh, Meshuggah again. Uh, it's like, I don't know what it is, but they released a new album not too long ago. And I wasn't, su I liked the one before. I wasn't super impressed with it, but this one is really good. And this one, I don't know if you've listened to it, Father. I don't know if you keep up with Meshuggah, but. Not really, I haven't heard it. This one is very like, um, I heard a story and I won't go on and on about this, but I heard a story that the lead guitarist, I can't remember the dude that usually is not writing. He's like writing the or well, whatever it's a very much a back percussion like it's like a tom heavy album it's very chuggy it's very like in all mashuga is but like this one's very much like it, it i was getting this real picture this morning when i was listening to it on the way to work and this is where i'm at because i'm listening to mashuga at like 10 o'clock in the morning on the way to work but it gave me this image of like orcs like marching to war with like like slamming on toms you know it was like these big okay toms. twin towers <laughs> Andrew, <Two> towers. <laughs> keep yeah. keep that image in your mind because i told you guys that i had something that i wanted to share yeah let's from rip today it. grip it and rip it bro i'm I, i'm gonna share it i'm just gonna share it because 
everything that has been said about until now. I'm, I think this is appropriate. I think this is very appropriate. Okay, so here it comes. My whole seat, but I'm just sitting on the edge right now. Cyprian. Okay, get ready, because here it comes. This is today. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and watch and watch and look at. I was like, is this real life or am I looking at something from a movie? But here we go. Can we hear this? Oh, choose. here we go. Let to me start move. over. And now America must choose to move forward or to move backwards, to build a future or obsess about the past, to be a nation of hope and unity and optimism or a nation of fear, division and of darkness. MAGA Republicans have made their choice. They embrace anger. They thrive on chaos. They live not in the light of truth, but in the shadow of lies. But together, together, we can choose a different path. And now America must choose to move forward I think it's or to move backwards, to build a future or obsess about the past, to be a nation of hope and unity and optimism, or a nation of fear, division, and of darkness. MAGA Republicans have made their choice. Oh, wait. They Did embrace it anger. Yeah, it repeated. Yeah, it's repeated. They thrive yeah. on okay. chaos. Okay. They live not in the... Yeah, so, for, so for the Spotify, because we've been getting way more... We, we've been getting a lot more Spotify listeners now, and it's just, listen, I just want to, if they haven't seen this, I don't know where this is. I have no idea. But President Biden is speaking in front of like the, I guess it's the presidential flag, the American flag, but the background is red. Yeah. And there are two soldiers, I guess those are Marines in dress uniform. No, you mean Imperial Guard. I was gonna exactly, say, um, exactly. Standing yeah. behind him. I was, when I saw this, I was like, has, it, has an American president ever had it? I'm looking at this aesthetic and I'm like that where are we what what just happened what just happened I mean pick your choice well we've begun the descent into V for Vendetta with the Chancellor that's what it looks like yeah. and that look that's on purpose like the thing is that's that's a set that somebody was like yep that's what we're using yeah it kind of looks like a TV set I mean, it does look like a movie. That's set. kind of besides the point, the ominousness, the showing that we're ready to engage with violence, the, the showing that we, we too have our strength. I have, we are the strength of the armed forces, the federal government. We are, you know, the empire, however you want to look at it, you know, mm -hmm. the colors, the use of red. I mean, you're talking about Republicans, the, the Democrats, obviously the Democrat color is blue. But you look at this, again, the Hegelian dialectic, and this kind of like transposing of... But, but, but Father, Father, forgive I, me, have you ever seen the president of the United States use a red background? It's no. always blue. The That's, executive, uh, the government, it's always blue. Yeah, yeah. It's, something, it's, something comes, there's a synthesis that comes from this. Right? That these... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what well, we go ahead. Andrew. I'm sorry, before we start this, because it's important, I don't know what that word means that Haley Dean dialectic. Haley dialectic. Yeah, this is what essentially, what it is it's 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 two, it's the, const the construct of two opposing sides to create a, 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 a synthesis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you put the, the left and the right, the red and the blue, the black and the white against each other intentionally. To create a synthesis, you know, it's it's the whole through it's the whole reason why doing the royal path. It's like you know, these things, these two opposing sides are all. And I know it's a tired trope for some people, but it's just it's becoming increasingly, increasingly more important to understand it, um, because the provoking that's being done with this message is precisely what's needed to energize you know, the quote unquote right. And then there's going to be a volley back and forth. And 
what comes out of the chaos and the shadows you know, is, is order, right? Um, and uh, the order, you know, our, the left, President Biden, he's not going to bring that order. It's going to be something different. He's just the he's just the the finger provoking. I well, think. yeah, they're they're setting up like it's like purposely. Let's make this dude into a cartoon villain to prom yeah. to provoke someone out of a sense of justice to yeah. do something. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And the the messaging on you know propaganda, subliminal level, all those things, you know. Yeah, it's pretty serious. It's pretty serious. Mm. So forks beating drums and <laughs> yeah. But it's but it's such a, a different um it's shocking I think that, almost. I mean Yes, yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's shocking to to see it. And it's one of those things where like we talk about it all the time, we know it's coming, but it's one of those things still when you see it, it's kind of like it's like everything else. It's like, yeah, I believe in heaven. You see a miracle working icon, it's shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh yeah, I know the demons exist, blah, blah, blah. But then like you wonder you, why you're all pissed off. Then when you see them just <laughs> causing complete utter chaos around you and just people just becoming, you know, demonic NPCs, they're like, oh yeah. I, it's shocking sometimes how over it can be. It's just, and I think that's really key because, um, you know, there's, there's this phenomena, this may sound kind of interesting to people, but it's kind of like, you know, there's there's people who like train in martial arts and, and everything, and they could spend a lot of long time doing that. But it's not uncommon to hear someone like freezing, like, and, and their first fight, like their first actual fight. And I don't mean sparring, like to actually get into a street fight. This, it's a common phenomenon of someone freezing, you know? And then you'd say, oh, this time of preparation, blah, blah, blah. Like what really happened, you know? And um, I would say this is kind of like one of those things, like it's difficult. I, I think that this is talked about in war biographies too. Um, with all the basic training, the boot camp, all the stuff, and then someone hits combat and they freeze, you know? And I think that's a whole thing we've never really talked about, like what that looks like, you know? It's just, you can only prepare so much and you have to recognize that that's, that's kind of what happens, you know? There's gonna be people who uh, are really get behind it and they're like, yeah, I, I wanna hold the line, meaning I'm not gonna, I, I don't wanna fall to, to, to the right, let's say that's the easy temptation right now, like that's the obvious one. But when push comes to shove, what happens, you know? Um, so, because it's very easy to say, especially in this situation, if you're not if you're not aware and you haven't been preparing yourself for this to come, it's yeah. very easy to be like, well, I mean, look, yeah. right? It's like, look, you want to see who the villain is? Like, clearly, this is the villain, what a right? Like, there's no question that here's here's the villain. And we need to react in a way that we're the heroes. That's the villain. So let's go attack the villain. Yep. Mission accomplished. And that's the setup. That that's exactly. I mean, this the scripting of what was said, it couldn't be more cartoonish in its gregariousness. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. Uh... And I think also a fear. So it's it's this weird game being played mm -hmm. where where what's being asked of people is to like, is to act because they're gonna act out of fear. So it's like, here's the villain. The villain is talking about me, right? It, it's straight out of E from Vendetta. Mm -hmm. So clearly there's a target on my back. Mm -hmm. So like, so I need to form the resistance or whatever it is, Bingo. right? Like, yeah. it, cause if I don't form the resistance, something, horrible is going to happen to me but the 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 reality of it is no 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 the whole game here is for you to do something dumb mm -hmm. that's right it's just like whether it was the bully on the street or the cop on the street or the whoever in the street you know saying something to provoke you like to do something that i mean that's that that's the name of the game and you know it's kind of funny i, I want to give people credit actually i mean 
if we go back over there, I mean, definitely there's been ample opportunities at least since 2015, if not before, where it's just like, yeah, I got to give it, I got to give credit where credit's due to quote unquote, you know, our countrymen. Um, it's almost surprising things haven't popped off to a greater degree, right? I mean, that, I mean, just think about all the riots. And I mean, it was so absurd, right? Like, no one in their right mind thought that that was about racial justice. You know what I'm saying? Um, black people didn't think it was about racial yeah. justice, you know? So uh, the fact that like the country kept as calm as it did, I mean, I, you know, this is where I want to be um, not optimistic, but I, I think, you know, this is where I lean, I have to lean more heavily, God willing, on, on being, you know, a quote unquote Eastern Christian. Like, I believe in the fun. I believe in, in the fundamental goodness that God created man with. That doesn't mean we have common sense, <laughs> but I think, and, and this is the thing that, that you know, I, I wish I could try to get people to understand. Um, you know, I have found, and know this is, this might be wildly unpopular, I have found that people, for the most part, um, the average person is somewhat decent. Um, or at the very least cowardly, or they don't want to get involved, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think that this idea, whether someone thinks that, you know, under every rock um, past Colorado is a, is a racist just waiting to, to shoot a Black person, or whether, you know, uh, every person who, who isn't wearing, you know, cowboy boots in a truck is like, you know, a uh, communist, transgender, like, you know what I mean? Like whatever the caricatures are, um, I think at the end of the day, people kind of just want to live their lives and, and, and see past that, you know? And you see it because um, this is a common thing for a lot of us, um, I can't speak for everyone, but for a lot of us, our experience was, whether it was here in Kansas City or talking to other people, um, you know, like during the riots, quote unquote, the, the, the BLM riots and stuff, you know, it wasn't people in the neighborhood that was doing that. It was the people in the neighborhood coming out and being like, what are you doing? Like, get out of here. Like, you're ruining, you know what I mean? It was the woke college students. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm trying to watch my words more these days. It was the, but I have to just be frank to call it out for what it was, you know, it was the, the quote unquote white liberals, <laughs> you know what I mean? Who were, who were behind most of those, most of the things. And then obviously you have your opportunistic um, criminals. That's just what they are. Um, so, so yeah, I mean that's that's like a real thing. And 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 also too, um, you know, I'll I'll call it out. Right, uh, it was the same thing with the Charlottesville stuff. I mean, it's people who spent a lot of time on the internet, not not checked into real life. Yeah, have no real have no real experience mm -hmm. of the world outside of you know their own little hometown, whatever. And again, their um, their kind of um, feedback loop on the internet and and whatever you know kind of false world that they've created. And then you know bad actors, people who had already been involved with certain movements for years that were those movements founded on fear and, and hatred and all that stuff. So yeah, I mean. Okay, great. Were there some good, upstanding, just normal Americans? I'm maybe, I guess, but like largely, that's what compromise. That's that's what largely what comprised of uh, that quote unquote, you know, riot. Uh, and so, both sides are, you know, these extremes: the people in the middle, the people in the neighborhoods, the neighborhoods of Charlottesville, and the people in the neighborhoods of wherever there were riots. They just wanted to live their lives, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I have a question. Well, first, before the question, I saw this video <clears throat> to kind of speak to Father's point, and I don't, the video is what it is, but it's some young conservative white dude who's walking around a college campus dressed in a caricature of what a Hispanic person would look like, like sombrero, like a fake mustache. Something like, like this costume of Benji, that one? What's that? Yeah. And Daryl's like, that is offensive. 
that is a, and he's talking all these that is offense that is cultural appropriate people are walking like ripping a sombrero off and stuff and then he walks into a hispanic neighborhood he's like what do you think of what i'm wearing they're like oh you look great they're like oh we don't care yeah they're like oh he's like is this racist like no it's not racist like we don't care and my buddy uh nino is a great guy he's hispanic and uh he is the dude that he cracks the most jokes and his like belly laughing at like this like stuff that i'm even like that's kind of that's kind of dumb like but he's just dying laughing he's like it's true mexicans do love tacos and i'm like we get it nino like it's it's not really that funny but actually my question is somebody actually asked this a long time ago in a comment i'm trying to I'm trying to think of how to phrase this because it could potentially come across as like um, uh, maybe sanctimonious or elitist. But somebody asked what causes like a what's the difference between like a person who is quote unquote seeing what's going on and a quote unquote NPC? Like what cause like why does there seem to be these people, a large portion of people who are completely average, nothing really that off about them. If it were the 80s, they'd be dressing as though they're in the 80s. If they're 70s, they'd be dressing in the 70s. But since they are the time that they're in, they look at the magazines. This is the way I dress now. This is the car I drive. This is the way I act. This, these are the views I have. As opposed to like, and this is where the pretentious or yeah, pretentious or elitist attitude comes in where it's like, there's people, I guess, who are like us, or we are emulating something different. You know what I mean? It's not that you do you see what I'm saying? I'm trying to the say question, it in a way. I don't understand. What's the question? Like, the what's question the difference is, between? Well, the question is, what's the difference between an NPC and a person who sees what's going on? But I'm trying to couch it in this term of like, like defining for people out there who don't know what npc is, is that what is that what no 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 let me try one more time i'm gonna give it one more shot what makes it what's the difference between a person who ends up being an npc who just believes what they're told their entire life blah 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 blah, and a person who questions the narrative like what what's the difference like what's like is like it why like what how about this do you mean what causes someone to wake up sure that's it that's a, i think that's probably good yeah. But does so is that possible for everyone? Yes. Oh. Okay. That's okay. That's kind of one of the ways I wanted to get at. So if you're a human soul, if you're a human being, you've been endowed with the image of God, right? Which is your your human soul. Sure. And because of that, until you take your last breath, there's always hope. Um there's always the opportunity. Now, we can get into a whole interpretation about the mark of the beast. Um, um, the mark of the beast, you know, lowercase m and lowercase b versus cap, you know, uppercase m, uppercase b. Um, What's the difference between those two? So there has been the mark of the beast. So if we remember that we should understand eschatological events, things that are about the end times, you know, um, prophecies, the end times, the book of Revelation. Um, one thing that we can definitely, you know, put the stamp on is understanding these things are cyclical. So things will happen in a, in a, in a cycle. And that cycle always has that potential to become uppercase, the mark of the beast, like the final one, right? So Antichrist, the same thing. Hitler was an Antichrist. Nero was an Antichrist, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, there, were, there was a time during the Soviet um, regime and where um, the church, members of the church began to succumb to what's, what was called the living church, the Sergianists, those who were, were secular, have the, had the external trappings of the church, but, you know, were touched with the sophistication of the Communist Party in the world. And those people, those churches exist today. 
in spirit. You see them, um, you can taste them, you can tell. And so anyways, at this time, uh, I saw this great account uh, and it's just one, it's the one I can bring an example, but we can bring up many. It was off of the Gregory Takapolite channel, but you know, essentially the story is how there was a priest who was these two priests were living together or something to this effect. And the one priest is kind of like normal, you know, not really given over to anything, just part of the church serving. And then at some point in time, he begins to say, well, I'm going to go over to the Soviet church, the, the living church, the state church, because it kind of doesn't matter, whatever. So the story begins to talk about how there was these changes that were somewhat imperceptible. It wasn't necessarily like shaved off the beard or these things, but kind of like a little switching out to like, well, what do you mean the Soviets? Well, what do you mean this and that, right? The more of this just taking on and acquiescing to the system, to the beast and, and, and bearing that mark in the mind. So the fathers talk about like St. Andrew Caesarea and other fathers who make uh, pictures, you know, these patristic commentaries on Revelation about the mark of the beast being, you know, acquiescing in the mind, but also in the hand and works, right? So this is one way to understand it. But the thing that people get tripped up on is they think that it has to be one or the other, but it's both, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, um, and so th there's been these moments where people have sold out Christ, even though they're quote unquote Christian, because they, they want to get along with the system. They don't want to be ostracized. This is what happened with people. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it. I'm not saying that if you wore a mask or if you did whatever, that you were given the mark of the beast in the sense of there's no hope for you. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that there was an acquiescing to the spirit of, of the time, of the age, and that spirit is only growing. And it's not the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the spirit of a Christ, lowercase c, but not, not Jesus Christ, who's the head of the church. That, that was not from Christ. Christ did not ordain that. Christ did not bless that. The world imposed that. And that's fine. You know, some people had their ideas of, you know, uh, run and live to fight another day. I don't really, I'm not going to debate it. You know, we're three years in. And I guess if you're listening to this, you kind of already know where you, you already know where we stand probably. Um, but if whatever, so, um, but I would say this is an example of these little acquiescings. And that's why for some of us, for me, I'll just say on the record, I made a decision based upon my conscience where it's like I had to, I drew a line at like for my parish. I was like, no, there's certain things I'm just not doing because it had nothing to do with the quote unquote science of something. It was the spirit of, of what it was representing. The, it's a mark. Would, would you say, Father, that the, when you, when you talk about, you know, the taking of the mark in the mind and then in the hands through Work. work that mm -hmm. that person becomes in a way like an infernal icon of the eschatological mark at that point like are are they then are are they embodying yeah, or are they an icon of that final mark just well, real, real quick father eschatologic eschatologic i'm sorry it, it, it is referring to the end times right end times eschatological yeah, yeah. yes okay so so I think a better way to say it is that um, there's always a potential. And so the potential is, do you, this is why this idea of like, I'm just gonna live now and like, it'll work out later. Like it's very dangerous. Um, this is why being authentic is, is the key thing. What does it mean to be orthodox? It means to be authentically a, a disciple and a member of the body of Christ. That, that's what it means authentically. Not when it's convenient. I'm not, or, I'm not orthodox and I don't have a certain position, you know, on Sunday or at the men's group and then I'm different at the bar or I'm different wherever. That, that's not it. It's that, true. That, that yeah. is the spirit of antichrist because it has no problem switching in and out, right? That, that's not that's not what it is. That's not what it means to be authentic. 
the whole purpose of our tradition is that we become authentically bearers of the image of God fully, not just image, but also likeness. And in that likeness, that's where the authenticity comes. Everyone bears the image, not everyone has the likeness. And so in order to acquire the likeness, you must become authentic. You must be that. You can't pretend to be courageous. You have to be courageous. You can't pretend to be merciful. You have to be merciful. You can't talk about prayer. You have to pray. That's what it means. And so the system is always looking to say, that's okay. You can do that too, but do this. Oh, that's okay. You can worship your Jesus. Just give a little pinch of incense here. That's okay. Just give a little pinch of incense to Jupiter. No problem. So the problem is, of course, as we all know, because people don't see marble carved statues of Saturn because they don't see, you know, little gold. <laughs> they think that that's idolatry and they just go like, they roll their eyes and they go, okay, spare me. No wonder Joe Biden's on a hot one. You know, this is, this is, this is what they say. This is what they think, you know? Um, and so like what happens is, is when, when someone begins to give themselves over to that, I would just say to someone, um, is there like, are they done? No, because I, there's plenty of people who have repented of that. Here we and go. Just, yeah. Right I mean, yeah. Right. There's plenty of people who repented of it. And I mean, that's why, you know, calling out to everyone, if you can hear my voice, um, it's not about the muddy middle, right? To, to walk a real path is the harder thing to do um, because we have to leave room and we have to make sure like that we remember it's not flesh and blood you're wrestling against. So your Aunt Minnie, who's just as woke as can be and just whatever, um, the temptation is just to just want to murder her in your mind, to just discount her, to just not look at her as human anymore. That's a temptation and you have to resist, period, you know? Um, or maybe you're on the other side of it and it's your Uncle Joe who's got the don't tread on me flag, the MAGA flag, the MAGA hat, the whatever. And you just want to see him as just this whatever. And the temptation is, it's like, oh, how can Uncle Joe wear a cross and pray and still wear? It's like you you gotta you, you gotta be careful because that's part of the trap. And and I know I know for a fact some people are struggling with this because I read something not too long ago somewhere and someone's kind of making a comment. <clears throat> it's a separate thing. I don't really want to get into where I saw, it, but I could tell that not that it was aimed at what, at our project at what we're doing. But this, this spirit and this idea of being like, to fall into the trap is a problem, you know? And they're kind of a, you know, quote unquote orthodox guys, quote unquote saying like, no, we're vanquishing our enemies, homie, sorry. And it's like, like, you don't know what's, you don't know whose spirit you're of. Yeah, and who are your enemies? I'm right? really we, If we wrestle not against flesh and blood, then like. Oh, Cyprian froze on a very cocky little smile. <laughs> I, um, I'm really glad. Uh, that... Oh, you, how are you going to vanquish? Oh, I froze. Yeah. yeah it, was like, it was good, though. You're like, it was like it was a good smile. Um, I'm really glad. I could tell that there's definitely been like a shift in the, the tide or whatever. I'm really glad that we're not, uh, that we're addressing both sides um, because we, you know, to the credit of whatever this uh beginning at least probably for me anyway there was some antagonism towards the left probably more so than the right and i think like what father said if there had been a break you know if things really came down to it i'm looking at both sides ones with the my body my choice you know shirts on and they're all masked and i look over at the dudes with the guns and the crosses i'm probably going to head to the dudes with the guns and the crosses and i'm you know, it's yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm glad you're saying. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, we said this before. Don't get me wrong. Like, clearly, obviously, right? I mean, for us, it's like you know, I see that. But like, I 
um, the zealotry that is can be comforting to someone who's just we've talked about this before the zealotry that that can be assuring and comforting for someone that is just rightly rightly disgusted by all of the just abhorrent and very demonic practices that we find in the left it's totally understandable i mean it's totally understandable right um but it's like anything else um for me right for for me um, and, and this is, it, it, I'm not trying to be tongue cheek or trying to be cheeky when I say this, it's the harder thing. The easier thing is just to just throw your hat in with like what feels good, what's comfortable, what's right. But, but I can't do that because there's a, there's a trap there. I mean, it's just, I don't know how else to, I don't know how else to put it. Right. And, and the thing is, is like, um, we have to really, we have to really understand that because look, um there's a book um my battle with hitler i think it's called dietrich von hildebrand it was like the first one is one of his he was a roman catholic theologian and scholar and one of his claims to fame is like, i think he was like the first one like um exiled to austria like early early did they make a movie about him no i don't think so they might have, I don't know, I'm, I, I'm not sure. But the, the thing in reading him, and, and so my godson, if, I guess that's what people come here for, right? Like, like all the woo-woo stuff, but like my godson gave me that book totally unrelated to, um, forgive me, was it, when was Trump elected, 16? 16. 2016, yeah. He gave me that book, I want to say end of 14, right? Getting into 15. And like the conversations we were having had nothing to do with like Trump's campaign. It was just completely separate, right? And I remember reading it and I remember what he's talking about, Hildebrand's talking about in regards of like the quietism of the Catholic church and like how it really facilitated like it was a quietism, don't say anything. And just bit by bit, you know, the church was subsumed into the movement, it, just like what we're talking about. It made sense, right? It, like they saw the points that Hitler was talking about. Family. Family, and, family. Uh, yeah. All of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and the, the particular minority class that, <laughs> that Hitler rallied against, you know, it's not like there were things that they saw and agreed with, you know, um, and 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 so we know how that kind of ended up. And and just so we're clear, it's had long, far-reaching effects. Um, we don't even have to get into the cool stuff about um, certain Germans. Um, living in South America and doing interesting uh, experiments, but that's all fact, by the way. But we don't have to talk about that. We can just talk about what's happened in Ukraine. And, you know, when we talk about, it's not neo-Nazis in Ukraine, it's Nazis in Ukraine. Like, just so we're clear, it's not neo-Nazis in Ukraine, it's Nazis in Ukraine. Uh, so like the the results, of the acquiescing to taking the mark by the Roman Catholic Church, one of the many times that they've taken the mark, right? I'm not the one who's just saying that, that's the Grand Inquisitor, right? They, they failed that temptation, right? Taking on the, the power of, of the nations, right? Um, offered by Satan. Anyways, um, not individual Catholics, so you guys are good. God bless you guys, we love you. Not talking about people, talking about the broader system institution okay so anyways um that acquiescing is what facilitated so much of this kind of nazi undercurrent that you see in ukraine that's a real thing and i hope that someone i, I hope that we still have some people who are more sympathetic to the left that watch this because you know like good on you like i like the balance we need the balance but like this is one of those ones where it's just like straight up 
the forces over there are evil. <laughs> like, I, I just, I'm just going to say it. And they, because they have their roots. I mean, um, we've talked about this before. Some of us were paying attention in 2014. Most of the, in, you know, the NPCs weren't, right? That, that's why so much of this is just kind of like, for a lot of us, right, was an eye roll because we've been watching and we remember the quote unquote approved outlets commenting on the Nazis in, in Ukraine in 2014. And like, where are they now, right? Um, trying to give Facebook, giving like an okay to the Azov battalion. You know what I'm saying? Like all of this stuff, which that's part of what, like, what causes people to wake up. I think what causes people to wake up is there's a certain shift of absurdity for most people at this point in the game. For those of us very early on, it was, it was kind of like that story I was telling about you know, the priests were just kind of like, it was imperceptible, but it was a weird, like, well, what do you mean Soviets? Like, why are you being so antagonistic? It was a weird, it, like we talked about this when we had, uh, we, we went to, where did we go to Thai food? And uh, with the brothers, remember that? We were talking like, we were swapping stories. Yeah. Like, what was your moment? And we were talking about like here uh, in the States and our parish, it was this weird, like, these people who we knew for years and who you know we loved and we thought loved us, all of a sudden becoming really weird and like passive aggressive and just kind of like talking about points as like, and like for me, I literally was dumbfounded because I just, at, I had long been, you know, at best a lurker on Facebook at that point. I just wasn't there. So like one of those, we've talked about this before, forgive me, the common thread of people who are just like looking to Facebook for their social validation, for their news. These are the people who are getting picked off, who are just kind of like sucking it up and just like, it was almost like the Incredibles too, where like, don't look at the screen because that, that one guy was just, anyways, you had to see Incredibles too to know what I'm talking about. Well, but, and now that this week it comes out that actually like in multiple formats that actually like oh no the government literally was like manipulating executives and decision makers at social media companies like here's the proof in, mul in multiple places well going back to what father just said because it's it's, it's interesting <clears throat> because hindsight's 2020 but there's there looking back there was clues um like there's this episode of community where uh, they find this guy and it's not important, but then at the end, it turns out he's racist. And they look back and they're like, well, there was some clues. And one of the guy, Donald Glover, he's an actor who's black. And he's like, he's like, the guy's like, I wanted to find a place free from darkness. He's like, you know, I, some people are just born natural jumpers. And then it even shows him like, he's got like a giant swastika tattooed on his chest. And then they're like, whatever, Jeff's being Jeff, you know? And then like looking back to like, wait, he was racist the whole time because I say this because some of those folks, again, looking back, mm -hmm. I was just talking about this with my wife, actually. She was talking about, um, you know, cause we knew him, we loved them. We were close, you know, somewhat close with them um, about how they all really struggled with Proverbs 31. And they all had this huge gripe session about it one time. And my wife being- People little, don't know Proverbs 31 is, tell them what it is. So Proverbs 31 is the proper wife. It's it's the, a way a good wife conducts herself. So she gets up before the rest of the family to make sure that, you know, the food is ready. She, or no, first she prays. She gets up and she prays. Then she makes for, you know, she watches the house while the husband is away, while the husband's taking care of business. Um just just the good wife and there was a group of women who used to meet at our church at our parish and my wife being a little baby orthodox that she was didn't really understand that it's not okay to just sit around a bad mouth scripture so she was kind of chiming in she said oh yeah of course that was written by a man like of course like you know this whole blah 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 and then like it's shocking because all of those women left like all of them left and um looking back it was like oh wait jeff was racist the whole time like it they were looking for an excuse and that they were looking for so an much they were looking for an out 
that was i mean everyone was i mean not i mean them especially and them t- they took capital t capital o the out but i mean how many people were looking for a way to get out of their lousy what's money? interesting what's interesting is you know i mean i just say it because like everyone needs to understand that they found their way somewhere <laughs> and and so th- this is this is why all this is it is what it is right like um where did they find their way to they you know they found they they found a place where they can they can have the trappings right the soviet right. church they found their way to a, to a soviet church right a living church where those where someone they found their way to a place where it'll be much more progressive much more like mm. all, all that good stuff right which is and that pla- and that place was prepared that's the interesting part about it right is that it's like that place was already ready for them to to come like mm-hmm. oh it's here it's prepared mm-hmm. which is then which is then portrayed as welcome to this house of healing from that mm-hmm. mean old nasty church that refuses to make priests wear masks behind the altar and stuff like that so so like that that reality is um important because you know I, again um it's really as simple as like you can do whatever you want just like i just you know i'm choosing not to change the traditions of the church as i've received it and the reason why i'm saying it like that is the tactic of the enemy which influences these people because that's the way the world works and we can we can walk through all the things right now um you know, you, uh, it's not enough for you to just say, like, you can do what you want to do, but like, this is what I have to hold to, right? Well, what do you, what do you mean? Like, that's, you can't do that. Like, on one hand, signs, violence, like all, all the stuff, right? It's this idea of live and let live doesn't work, right? And the idea is that those who are saying live and let live are, are actually like the aggressors and this, this, and that, you know? Um, and, and I, I just think that the reality that people find themselves forced to like choose, this is kind of like getting back full circle. That's the problem. Right. Because all of a sudden, you know, I had some, I, you know, someone and people, you know, one person in particular call me up cursing at me about, you know, I'm, you know, I, literally it called me like a MAGA guy. Like, you're a MAGA guy. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, and literally this person said to me, oh, come on, man. You know what I'm talking about? And it wasn't Joe Biden. Oh, come on, man. You know what I'm talking about? Like, uh-huh. just, put, just put a mask on. Like, when you don't do that, you're supporting MAGA and you know it. And I was like. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to sit here in that this whole time. I'm just saying like, it doesn't matter in that sense back then. Okay, we've gotten through that. What's important now is that we're moving into a time where people, the NPCs who are just kind of like plugged in, if, if they, they aren't checking that, right? Like that language is just, and this is where it becomes tough because the temptation for us becomes really like, well, if you're just gonna think I am that, shoot, let's let's get it on. You know what I mean? I'll I'll be, I'll be that. I'll be your Uncle Barry, whatever. And like, we have all felt that. I have felt that, right? Well, if you're gonna accuse me of being a, a mean, nasty, uh, caveman, <laughs> you know, great, you know. And I'll just be one. I'll just be one. See, that, uh, Father, this is like so dangerous. It's I temptation. see this so often, where they're like, "Well, all right." let's just be let's just be who they say we are then yep they say we're this yep all right you say that's who i am you say i'm a hateful person yep. okay well just let me be let me just be that person then yeah yeah i i for, for me i've never man maybe it's just my personality i've never been so frustrated that i've said well let me then be the terrible thing that you maybe never may i can't say never <laughs> but certainly in in my recent memory that seems like not something that I would be prone to do. 
And I've been called some pretty terrible things. I mean, God help us. Um, it's a temptation. It's a temptation. You know, it, it, it is a temptation. Um, and just so everyone's clear, I do not think it's an easy temptation to, to wade through. I mean, um, you know, I... There are these there are these moments. Saint Brony talks about the hypostatic principle, and it's it's a teaching that you know we all will experience these moments in the life of Christ. This is what what authenticates us, you know. Um, what did Judas? What what did? I, I've been thinking about. I thought about a lot about this today. <laughs> you know, I think I, I've thought a lot about it. Um, the last three years. Jesus knew about Judas the whole time. I just, I really stop and think about that. Well, there were all these interactions, right? There were all these interactions throughout the gospel of, of the two of them where Judas is showing who he is. But obviously, I mean, Christ is God, so he knows what's going on. But I mean, even to, there's a, a lot of foreshadowing just from a narrative standpoint of, of who this character is. And I just want to throw this out because that's the temptation. Like no one sees that as the temptation. Yes, our Lord was tempted many times. That the the three times, uh, in the in the desert. Uh, but there was many other temptations, and and that's the temptation. I don't really hear people think. I think about it a lot. The temptation you are with your betrayer. And you are loving your betrayer. It's very, very painful. And yeah. that yeah. is, this is what I'm talking about. You won't experience that if you give yourself over to that easy temptation of, I'm just going to join the winners. I'm just going to join the guys that like, I got more in common with. It. I mean, I get it. Don't get me wrong. Like, I get it. We need to form alliances. And I, I, okay, fine. I'm talking about at the end of the day, right? When I'm facing my Lord, like when I knew better, did I do better? Because I find uh, sticker warning, uh, people have been bringing up, I should like be warning people. And I think maybe there's truth to that. Maybe you should turn off the podcast right now if you don't want to be accountable for, for these things because. Um, winning like the Lord did not choose winning like the Lord was tempted you don't think the Lord wasn't tempted knowing the whole time what Judas was going to do I mean he didn't succumb to it that that to me I just I bow down and I go man God help me. Like, how can I be like you? That the pain, you don't, you don't know that pain until you've been betrayed. And once you've been betrayed and then betrayed again, it's just like, wow, you know, uh, that's, that's what it means to, to follow Christ. You know, I can't find it, but St. Nikolai, the prologue, he was just talking about this. He's talking about Man, I really should have screenshotted that because it was really good. But he's basically talking about, he says something to the effect of, um, you know, uh, he basically says something to the effect of, like, you don't think that God doesn't see, like, the um, the pagan worshipers. You think that, I, I, I can't remember exactly the titles that he uses, but something, you know, I think it's something about abortion doctors. You think God doesn't see this, but he allows it but he allows it, but he allows it, you know, he's constantly like saying like, God is tolerating these things. He's tolerating them. And it's something to the effect. I'm sorry, St. Nicola, I don't mean to botch it, but he's like, you should too. Like, I mean, he's basically saying like, I think he's warning against a kind of extremism, at least as I remembered it, that it stuck with me that like, he's like, you think that God is not seeing these same things that's making you mad. And we're, you know basically the bear it bear it as god does bear it as god does you know like don't lash out in violence you know that that image of the icon of the monks standing between the two sides in ukraine so i'm really i really wish i had taken a picture of it but 
but it's not but i think the this this bearing it i think that's really where the the question of the royal path comes in because okay so it's not join into the narrative that is of the world and then but at the same time it's also don't completely throw blinders on and stick your head in the sand and be like oh, i'll just ignore it and just go about my thing but it's also to not accept it's also to not accept what comes and the temptation that's pulling you towards the thing so yeah i mean like supreme like you talked about like okay let's show the resistance it's like the resistance has already been formed. That, I guess that's the thing. The resistance has already been formed. And there's a matrix within the matrix. We can just do this all night. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you're getting attacked by butterflies. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting attacked by bugs over here. Um, it's like, look, it's, how many times, you know, we talked about this. Okay, great. You come to orthodoxy because it is the most conservative branch of Christianity. Absolutely. Um, not, you know, some people are definitely working really hard to change that. That's besides the point. Um, okay, great. You came to orthodoxy because of the historical church. Okay, great, right? Um, that's not what's gonna keep you. And more importantly, it's not really like the resistance because like, like we kind of alluded to here, like there's all kinds of quote unquote orthodox churches that are co-signing openly or kind of covertly these agendas, no problem, okay? So what is the resistance? That That's the thing is like the deep tradition of the church, like the ones who don't roll their eyes at the canons, the ones who don't roll their eyes at the elders, the ones who don't, the ones who don't say with lip service, yeah, I believe in the body and blood of Christ, but really they, are scared to take communion because they're gonna get sick and infected. Like, yeah, I said it. So uh, that's like, that's the gateway into like, what is the thing? Like the confessors, the martyrs, those, those soldier saints who, yeah, two pages earlier, they may have been, you know, slaying, slaying fools in, in the Legion, whatever, but they had the discernment, the connection to say, now I lay my sword down because now it's time. Because why? Vengeance is mine, thus say the Lord. The real resistance will never rob the Lord of his, of his rewards. The real resistance will never get in the way and take from the Lord what is his. That, that's, a, that's a whole other piece that people don't want to think about. Vengeance isn't yours, it's the Lord's, right? It, Am I saying that like when I see these things that I don't get upset? Of course I do, right? Are you, am I saying that when I say these things that we should just be indifferent and just be quietest and be like, oh, it doesn't matter? Of course not, because there is a whole side to resistance. We can talk about that now if you want. But really at the end of the day, like you don't, you don't, <laughs> are you fearing the judgment? Do you believe in the judgment? Do you believe you're going to be held accountable? And you may be bold. You may be like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll do what I got to do and just go, go, you know, I'll receive whatever he's got. I'll receive my, com my, my coming uppings or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm the same way too in certain regards, right? But like what God calls us to do is to be his disciples to the end. And that's why we got to read the lives of the saints. Right. There's going to be something that there's a line. You're not going to know that line unless you know the saints, which is essentially, I guess, the takeaway. That's why Protestantism and all these other ones, the, any confession that doesn't connect with the community of the saints, super dangerous because their line is made up. They don't they don't know the line of the heart. They don't know where the conscience lays. They don't know where the church has said yay or nay on something. They In don't practice, know they have no line. They have no like line. Like you can look and see they have no line. I mean, honestly, one of the first things that anyone who, who has come into the church began to actually read the lives of the saints, all of us had those moments where you're shocked. You're like, what? James the Faster, right? Sleeps with the, with the, with the demonized, demon-possessed, retarded girl, sleeps with her, kills her. <laughs> she buries her body, hides it, right? 
he he lives in a grave for like what was like 10 years an open grave for like 10 years god accepts his repentance shocking every year he comes around it's shocking yeah right? i blew my socks off i i it's shocking. I it's shocking, like right? 5 30 in the morning i was just like this is incredible yeah. yeah the the jester who's mocking christ in front of the prefect mocking baptism and all of a sudden he's like starts to confess christ right and they're like okay it's not funny anymore it's like no 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 this is real right shocking it, it's shocking right saint mary of egypt right every year when we read this story there's that part where it's just like oh this is rough for the little ones because it's pretty explicit about how how far gone saint mary of egypt was shocking right worse than a prostitute because she didn't even do it for fair she did it just yep. for debauchery yep we, we can go on and on and on right so the saints show us what that line is but you this is this is the thing you can't be lazy you 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 can't be lazy you have to you have to seek the lord you have to commune with the saints so that you can know what that line is and uh, you better get at it because when stuff starts popping off that's not that's that's not the time to know what your line is you should have known where your line is two years ago. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, yes. you, you, need to, you need to work these things out and know where your line is. So that, because here's the thing, the person who doesn't know where their line is, there's always an exception, but you're probably toast. You, yep. you'll, you'll take a mark, right? And it doesn't have to be someone coming and etching in 666 on your head with a laser beam. We all know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Yeah. you'll do whatever you'll do whatever you're told you know not not get into the zach de la roche right because they they clearly oh they, man they, yeah, they, they clearly they, do whatever they're yeah. told right yeah what a great a great example of the type of you know i mean like literally like there was that that um that burn we used to say back in the day like oh, what a tool right you know yeah, they tools. used to say exactly. that but like literally like what a bunch of tools right mm -hmm. like what a bunch of useful idiots like you know, I, I mean, yeah, I, I used to be like, man, you know, rage, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, oh, <laughs> rage. You know what I mean? Like, yikes. So when the, when the rubber actually hit the road. When the rubber actually hit the road. So, you know, um, no, you got to find the line, man. And, and you better, you know, however you want to look at it, got to build your arc. If you haven't started building your arc, I don't know. If you haven't found an arc, I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, well, the, the, the thing, Father, about, you know, you said the resistance has already been formed, but I think, you know, going back and maybe I, maybe if we could just linger on it a little bit longer, because I think it's like, I think it's important is like, it's not just the resistance that was already formed, like the other side is already formed too. And it's like over the last two years, that's one of the things that I think people have like, people have, what would I say? It has seemed like it's been a blind spot is that it seems like all of these things pop up and then it's like, but everything's ready. Like, depending upon what all these other, whether it's a policy thing, whether it's actually, you know, it takes time to actually like manufacture and to, and like manu get factories ready to manufacture different medications. You know what I mean? And it's like, I'm ready to wait, go, man. yeah. How is it? How are there hundreds of millions of doses cute. already? Like what's, what, what, what's cute. going on? Technology. What's wrong with you? Technology. Listen, um, I didn't, I don't, I don't know. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to listen to the rest of that message. Um, but like, you know, and, and I'm, I don't know, maybe tonight was just whatever for me, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not, I'm not the guy in that sense, but I, I will say, um, it's really important that we don't, we don't give up. It's really important that we don't give up on people. It, it's really important that like, and I'm talking to myself right now. You know, I'm a human being, you know, I need God's grace, not just like everyone else more. I need God's grace more than you do. I need it more than Andrew do, more than Andrew does. I need it more. You know what I mean? Um, we can't give up on people, you know, and we have to, we have to strive to carry our cross and, and to really be all things to all men in the right way. Not muddy middle, not man pleasers, right? We, we you don't know who's going to be that person that wakes up. But I, I tell you this much, you come out swinging on someone, 
because you're scared or because you got a chip on your shoulder because you want to show you're part of the the tough crowd or whatever it is you know you don't know that person could be that person is someone who christ is putting your way like christ wants every single one of those people to repent god doesn't want anyone to perish and i and if you think that that's pollyannish like god forgive you god because because again remember what we're talking about is we're christians we're orthodox right um so this reality of like you don't know your aunt bessie and your uncle joe you don't know do your work pray for them you know shut your mouth a little bit more yeah um, and 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 understand what's really at stake you know what i've been doing lately this a little shift in gears Oh, I just, I spend so much time reading about hell. <laughs> I spend so much time reading about hell, the toll houses and the judgment. And um, I, I just think like everyone should do that a little bit more often. I really do. Um, there's there's um, Sometimes I watch video about people who like sepsis amputees, <laughs> you know, where they lose all four of their limbs. You know what I mean? I like stuff like that. Um, I wish more people would do that because when you see how gnarly life can be, most people who find themselves yapping at the mouth and clicky clacking on the keyboards, they don't, they're bored. They don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Their life is too smooth and comfortable. Right, someone who's really aware of human yeah. pain, someone who's really aware of human pain, they don't, they ain't got time for that. They don't have time to get into like internet debates about like whatever, but they do have time to look at someone down the eye and be like, "Man, you don't know what you're, like that's not that's not where it's at," and to speak truth in love, right? Like like that's that's where we're at, you know. Um, I was just working with a guy today, Father, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Please, please. work with a guy who's like two weeks into his recovery and no ifs, ands, or buts, just absolutely suffered a horrific tragedy. I mean, I won't, every parent's worst nightmare and he just absolute worst tragedy. And the guy sat down and was pretty much still reeling from it because it's about a week and a half into his grief or something like that. And uh, just immediately, it was one of those good conversations because there's no idle chit chat. There's no BS. It was straight into. And the only thing I could really tell him was just like, bro, if you can make it through this sober, you will be such a badass. Because it's like, what more can they take from me? Like, what more? Like, I've already faced this. Like, what is the, what is the, what can, what else can I lose? If you can make it through this sober, you will have confronted a pain and a truth that's much more fundamental than true reality than all the like happy, joyous, and free talk that you hear about in like meeting halls about how life is so wonderful now. Is like the fact of the matter is, is like you live in a different reality than everybody else does now you have experienced something that like everybody dreads to go to. And if you can come out the other side of it, like, you know, I don't, I don't know what could stop you. Like, I don't know. I mean, of course something could stop them, but it's like, I don't, I, I mean, that's just something that transcends. That's a room in the heart. I don't, you know, God forbid, you know, I mean, not my will, but yours be done. But like, I don't, I don't want to explore it. And I was like, with the, pain that I felt you know throughout my life with the losses that I've had it's like you know I there's a language I can speak with people but I was like I can't even get to your level like that's just the type of suffering I just don't understand and you know he seemed like he he did well with it I mean I basically told him you know it's just like pray for your son you know pray for your son I mean I'm sure he's fine but pray for him as a way to heal and pray for yourself because that you know God I you're in one of those moments where it's like should really just be focusing the only thing that's going to be able to really carry you is God and that's just a language that most people don't know how to speak they've never been you know they maybe lost a grandpa or a grandma blah 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 mm -hmm. you know but even then it's just like 
it's not the same thing. Yeah, I mean, it's a, Job, it's a Job situation for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. And, you know, um, just a fun little twist on things, you know. Sorry for saying badass, by the way. <laughs> like, um, when things get rough, like, that's God's love, right? I mean, God loves you enough to allow you to, um, to taste of something deep, you know. Um, and I think, I think the avoidance of suffering this is where we are always tempted and where most of us make our missteps is that we're, we're avoiding suffering and that very suffering is, you know, again, um, not easy, but it's, there's real, that's where you find grace. Um, but not everyone wants that, you know? Well, and people I, want things to stop, right? They're like, I'm going to do X. That's such the temptation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do X thing because this has to stop. Mm -hmm. This has to stop. And I have yet to see in the macrocosm or in the microcosm of just like interpersonal relationships when antagonism and escalation has ever made something stop. Yeah. You know, I mean, you <laughs> might you might be able to like you might be able to physically, you know, engage, let's say an individual, right? And you might be able to, to knock them out cold or worse and, and make them physically stop. But the situation has already spun into a place where it's not stopping, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if you've taken it to an extreme, right? Now the situation is, be way beyond whatever it was that was coming out of this person's mouth or the actions that they were taking. Like now the situation has expanded into a scope that is like going to have a massive effect on the, on your well being, the well being of everybody that, you know, people who aren't even there in that moment. Mm -hmm. And like this, this is the thing. This, this is the, this is the big blind spot on all sides. I'm just seeing, this impulse towards everybody, like we're going to do even, even people who are, who are acting, let's say like acting in a way that I find to be mostly noble and that I would agree with. Mm -hmm. Right. Where it's like, I'm well, going to do they're this. They're especially tempted because exactly. they are acting noble. Cause remember, if you are, if you are actually trying to pursue wisdom and nobility and just, you're trying to pursue Christ, that that's what's going to happen you know I, i'm thinking about um oh forgive me i can't believe I'm, I'm forgetting his name he just got picked up by the feds last time i heard um but i haven't heard anything i don't know if he's got released i don't i don't want to go too far i don't know if like i'm 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 out of date on the news um what are you talking about the founder of, of uh the proud boys um Oh, Gavin McGinnis? Gavin McGinnis. Um, really? I yeah, didn't got, even know that. He got picked up midstream. And so, I don't know, maybe we can have like a real time, but we can up our podcast game and someone can clickety-clack right now and see if I'll there's do it. an update. Because I, I, I don't know if they've discovered, because like, uh, as like Tim Cass are talking about like, well, he's a, he's a notorious troll. Is it a troll type of thing? Did the feds really pick him up? Who picked him up? Whatever. So I, I don't know like where it's at. That was a few days ago. So there might have been some resolve. Um, but like the reason why I'm bringing it up is because um, like there's- the Humble Boys. The, what's that? It's not the Humble Boys. Yeah, I mean, the, there was just- So Father, forgive me. They're saying, People are saying, but mind you, the first article I saw was from Daily Beast, which is definitely heavy yeah. woke, uh, are saying McGinnis allies are claiming he that saying that he faked his arrest. Yeah. So I don't there's obviously a, a lot muddy here. There's a so who knows? Who knows? Right. Um, but what I, what I guess what I'm trying to get at is that. Um, 
it's kind of irrelevant to my point to some degree because like when the proud boys thing is happening right and this is just you know it is what it is a lot of people are like scandalized and like just believing the narrative the racist through this and that right the problem with it was like on my end right i'm just like okay that's a whole part of like it, the the fred perry like the the oi boy you know kind of skin in like subculture like if you don't know that then like of course you know you just someone will look at you super and be like you got a shaved head you know he's a racist like, like you know what i mean just, it's not ridiculous right so so i get all that like i get that like that was kind of like an example where they're fed plant whatever i don't i don't really care you know what i mean the point that i'm trying to get at is that was whether it was a psyop or not it was galvanizing people who were rightly fed up with certain things is what i'm trying to get at okay but what to what end did it galvanize them what was accomplished like what was escalation escalation yeah that escalation that that's 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 the only that's the only point i'm really trying to bring up is is escalation and so, you know, St. Peter, he basically says, and I think it's in the second epistle, he's like, you know, if, if you're punished, basically, because, you know, you're being a fool, that's on you. You know what I mean? Like, that's not, that's not for the sake of righteousness. I'd have to pull up to find, forgive me for misquoting St. Peter, but um, like, this is what I mean about, let me even bring it down. You're a good man. And you're tired of seeing what's what's happening, whatever, right? Um, and it can go both ways. Um, and you just decide that, like, you know, enough is enough, and you put yourself out on the line for whatever, right? Um, you don't come home. You know what I mean? Like you said, there's these ramifications, and like, I'm all about laying my life down for something for sure. You know what I mean? But that's what I mean by the resistance has already been formed. Like I'm laying my life down for Christ. I'm not gonna lay my life down for like a false Christ. I'm not gonna lay my life down for like, and that that's the tragedy of the co-opting of Christianity by political movements. Is that at, at what point in time, it's like the Iron Guard or anything like that. At what point in time did it transition out of a genuine like desire for Christ and, you know, a time to take up arms, however you want to look at it, into something else. Most people can't discern that. Most people can, like, I guess what I'm saying is I wouldn't even be able to discern it. That's why I, that's why I'm saying know your line, because that's the only hope you have. If you try to figure out the line when you're in the middle of the melee, metaphorically speaking, it's not going to happen. It's, it's not going to happen, right? And so, you know, having integrity and just being like, this is what it means to, this is my king. This is, this is my code. This is how I, this is how I roll. However you want to look at it. If you don't have that, um, you need to get it. Yeah, this, this, I encountered this quite a bit you know, where I would speak to people over the last two years and I would be, and I would say, well, what if, what about when X happens? What will you do? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll wait until that. I'll wait until it happens. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I know what you'll do. Like you'll do the worst. If you'll do the worst thing. If the, if we're having this conversation right now, and and like you haven't even thought about this you will do, you will do the worst thing possible can guarantee because nobody i don't know anybody who makes who makes good decisions like like you said oh well like mike tyson says everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face mm -hmm. which sure. is basically what you, you had said earlier and it's like you know what unless you ran through and even then it's not guaranteed but like the only way to even give yourself a chance is to like First, maybe get punched in the face. If be willing to be punched in the face a few times, metaphorically, right? Like, 
but but you're going to have to like pick like you say pick a line stand by it and not like well this isn't the one that i can if it was the real big one i'll you know mm -hmm. it's 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 yeah yeah if and they if they come and take my guns then i'll you know but for now eh, i'll just go along mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i mean kind of getting back to some things it's like um one of uh um one of the, the spiritual children one of the parishioners they sent me i'd never heard of the guy um um sent me like a joe magiano like i don't know i don't know what the guy's name is uh he's like a nationally syndicated uh Oh, you're talking about uh he's got this he's got a shaved head. He's like a kind of uh you know like a kind he's of kind of broy type of yeah, buffer guy, whatever. Yeah, kind of it Italian y uh maybe yeah, like yeah, a yeah. racially ambiguous type of character. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, like Joe. Who are you talking about? His it's not Joe. You're you're confusing it with Joe Manganiello, but it's Oh, what is this guy's name? His name is uh, um, Dan Bon Don, Dan Bongino. Dan, Dan Bongino. Bongino. There you go. Dan Bongino. And uh, yeah, so like Dan Bongino, which I, I never heard of him, right? Is he big? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as like a political pundit, yeah, he's all over the the networks. Okay, so Dan Bongino. Uh, he had this little thing about, you know, uh, getting the jabby was his like worst mistake he ever made. Okay. <laughs> so here's the thing. People have done it. That's fine. People have repented of it. No problem. Okay. The only reason why I'm bringing it up is because no, two reasons. Number one, we got to always be aware and be careful. So here's what I mean. Just relax a little bit now. You know what I mean? Because we're at a stage now where there's, where there's more people who are going to be waking up and just like, don't put a roadblock for them, right? If someone's waking up to some stuff, be charitable, be a Christian, right? And, and encourage them. Be like, hey, man, God knows it's all good. Glad that you at least see it now. Whatever. You, you know what I'm saying? That's the number one thing that I, I just want to get across there, right? But the number two thing is that that happened because people didn't have a line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just, I, that's, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, right? So the people who are going to, who are, and there are people who have, and there, will go, there are going to be more people who are, are repenting of it. What, what are they really repenting of? Well, there's some people who are like, well, I have nothing to repent of because I was just doing what I was told, right? But there's going to be some people who are like, yeah, I was doing what I was told and it was, it was, it was wrong. Like, I know my conscience, like, it's not what I should have done, right? And so the, they're, they're repenting spiritually if they, if they feel where they made a concession, but it compromised something. You understand what I'm saying? And this is really expressed beautifully and profoundly when you read um, Father George Calciu, the Romanian priest who was in prison. And uh, he talks about how, you know, so many times we denied him, but we, we bitterly repented, you know? when they were putting our face in excrement and bucket, buckets of excrement or doing whatever they did to us at night, we, we bitterly repented, we bitterly repented. Like, this is really important because the church dealt with this with the Donatists who were like, no, if someone has denied Christ, they could not come back, blah, 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 blah. That, that's, that's a heresy, right? We maintain that if someone has denied Christ, if they are truly repentant, we have to, like, as a confessor, as a spiritual father, right, you better believe I got people who hate me. I got enemies, you know what I mean? I have many enemies, but I'm the enemy to none. That's, that's how I live.
And if one of the people who have slandered me and wished me harm and tried to break out the back window of my wife's van, <laughs> if one of them wants to be like, hey. True story. True, true story. story. Hey, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? I will confess them and, and help them to repent. Right? Um, if I wasn't a priest, I would forgive them and try to move on. And I'm gonna tell you something right now. Some people may be like, yeah, right. You know what? I'll, I'll never forget this. My father, that God grant him paradise. My father, when I first became a Christian, he really struggled with, with some things. You know, it's interesting because I fell in line. It's just, this is gonna be fun. Um, you know, forgive me. Uh, this might be like one of the censored episodes. I don't know. Um, you know, I talk about what, I'm, what I talk about because of, I've had experience. I, I'm sorry, I don't wanna be that guy who's gonna flex. I'm just, I'm not, this isn't coming out like I've read some kind of book and like thrown whatever. Like when I first became a Christian, quote unquote, whatever that means, I started trying to follow Christ. Like I was in an evangelical church and started swallowing all the evangelical politically I start swallowing all those points, right? Zionism, you know, Israel, you know, fill in the blank, whatever it was. I would because I, I thought I thought that's what I was supposed to do, right? A whole I had a whole season of that. I'll never forget. My dad was like, "Man, you don't even know what you're talking about." We got in this whole debate about about Palestine man you don't even know what you're talking about and he, my dad was just like Brr. he just started schooling me on stuff you know and I wasn't hearing it because the pastors at the Calvary Chapel and all the stuff I've been listening to they were like hey man this is the line if you're a Christian this is what you got to tell right I know what it means to be absorbed into the right and that temptation because that's what you think that's what you're supposed to do this is where I'm coming from you, you understand what I'm saying like that's like a real thing. And it wasn't really, right, until moving further on and maturing and experiencing things, I was like, man, dad was right. Dad was right. You know what I mean? And so I began to shift. And orthodoxy was the big shift because once I realized, like, oh, yeah, those, those Palestinians, man, a lot of them are Orthodox, a lot of them are Christians. Like, it isn't just, right? It, isn't, it wasn't this narrative that like the 700 Club had fed me, whatever. So like, you know. Uh, may I ask real quick, what is that narrative? I'm not sure I understand because I never really got swept up in it. If you don't want to rehash it, you don't have to. I just, I'm not familiar with that particular narrative. Are they like pro-Israel or anti-Israel? I'll just put it to you this way. The, the Orthodox Church, Orthodox Christians, we are Israel. Sure. Yeah. I mean that <laughs> we are Israel. Yeah. We are the we are the people of God. So start clicky clacking um commenters, but that's that's the teaching of the church. That's the reality. So, anyways, um that that whole narrative, you know, beginning to shift and like having to work through things, you know what I'm saying? And and of course, I at, at one time in my life found myself way over onto the left, right? And those were some old temptations for me because before it was cool, I was, you know, working class, listening to the groups like the Redskins, like, you know, unionize and all that, you know, socialism, all that stuff, like Trotsky, I, all that stuff, right? Like I, I know that stuff, right? So this, these polls, I'm I talk about this stuff because I, not only do I know, cause I've been on both sides, I've, I've, I've had my own kind of ping pong back and forth. The thing that's pulled me out of them is Christ is what I'm trying to get at. And, and once you are in Christ, like I have talked to people who are of Serbian nationality. I've talked to people who are of Greek nationality. I've talked to people who are of Syrian nationality. I've talked to people that are biracial. I've talked to people who are, I've, I've talked to everyone. I've talked to people from all sides of whatever who, 
who understand what I'm talking about, who understand what we're talking about. What's the common denominator? Do you know who it is? It's Christ. It, it's Christ. It's Christ. Like, here's the resistance. Here's the secret sauce. There comes a place, and this is how you know you're in Christ, where all that other stuff actually does begin to melt away and you see through it for what it is. Right? And so that whole reality, it's, it's, it's a journey. And some people are on that journey. So let us help them. Right? Let us, let us help them and like keep the door open for people who are trying to get into Christ. Because the unity is in Christ. The unity is in Christ. So that, so this, so this, that's yeah, wow, full circle. Unity there. is in Christ because the the whole that whole little narrative of that video is like these people over here are trying to be divisive. These people over here are, are hateful or whatever. Whereas obviously the speaker is dividing and being hateful <laughs> regarding those people, right? But it's like for whoever is saying it to be like we have a choice between hatred and division or between love and unity but they never, they never reference Christ. And yeah, it's like, dude. no, you, you, never so, reference. so we know which side you you're taking. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is he's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's right. Like, like what they're talking to, like the people he's talking about, like those people are really down for that. And we're still down for that. He's right. He's not wrong. But he's just as guilty. Like you, you that's, see the thing. Exactly. Like, that's like, it. That's, that's the, it. That's yeah. the whole point. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the whole yeah. point. And I just, I just want to add this because, like, something that I think might have got lost. Like, I brought up my dad. And I brought that situation because, like, that was a real kind of turnoff and temptation for my dad too. Because he's like, man, you know, like, I don't want anything. Like, what, like, you're a Christian now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what, what is all this? Right. You get swept up into all this and this and that. And, and, and that was legitimate for my dad. You know what I mean? It was legitimate for him, for him to see this and to see me being like swept up into that and be like, you know, like, I, I just, I think the reality of us, it's, it's not our fault that people have their opinions and have their things, but it is our responsibility to try to do our best and not be lazy. In, a, in the way that we are living our lives as as ambassadors in the body of Christ. Does that does that make sense what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I guess that's yes. like, you know, I'm not trying to be like, oh, well, the moral of this episode is this. <laughs> I just think like, you know, I mean, to like a real takeaway because, you know, hey, you know, take care of your family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Protect your family if you're a man. You don't protect your family, you don't take care of your family, you're not a man, right? Mm -hmm. um, but being a man and becoming a stormtrooper are two totally different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, don't become a storm. Like, you know, uh, that was one of the funny things about like, I don't, never mind. I was going to talk about Finn and all that stuff, but like, don't become a stormtrooper, basically, because once the helmet gets put on you, you're just a number, and you're not gonna be able to aim, anyways. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so I work with a lot of felons, and I I tell them like this is the part of being a man, is is like I'm sitting there, intruders in my house. I've got my bow and arrow like at them, like pointed at them, and I say, you know, I don't want to hurt you. I'll pray for you. I'm gonna call the police if you come any closer then yeah, that's probably gonna be like a shot to the leg or something with an arrow. And then if you keep coming after that, it's gonna be probably be because that's the part that's so important is just like, I'm not just like getting my jollies off ready to murk some dude because he's like, oh yeah, you know, this is what makes me feel alive. It's like what father said, if you, you know, if you're boxing and you get mad, you've already lost the fight, you, you know, fight. you've already lost the fight. So it's like, you know. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you said that, Andrew. I I don't know why, but I just feel like we keep touching. I mean, that's the road path. We keep touching on it. So I, it's like one of those things, can we even say it enough? But like, I, I, that's another good little kind of encapsulation. It's like, I'm just, we're, we're trying to encourage people just to box, right? And know who you're boxing and know how to box. Because the second you get mad, you've lost. Yeah. 
you're not you're not you're not in the game yeah you're no longer a pugilist you know what i'm saying um so i we were talking about it um i think we were i don't know um but i remember there's an article a couple days ago that i read that uh, we've got a couple minutes left, so I thought we could talk about this really quick. I linked it in our chat, but it's an article um, about the Serbs, the Serbian Orthodox Church in Serbia protesting the Euro Pride event. I didn't see uh, it. Did I send it? Hold on one second. Let me see if I sent it. I think I sent it. Give me one second, just in case. Sorry, this is excellent. I mean, Serbia's, right Serbia's Orthodox Christians march against Euro Pride event. Yeah, yeah. Save mm-hmm. Serbia in Thousands of protesters marched in Belgrade on August 28th to save Serbia in opposition to planned LGBT uh, celebrations. Despite the Serbian authorities' decision to cancel the events, organizers have vowed to press on, stoking fears of possible violence. Europride promotes lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, and intersex pride at the pan-European level and is hosted by a different European city each year. So was it going to be hosted in Serbia? So my takeaway was that there was going to be a little event in Serbia and they were protesting that. Like maybe there was like a a big one, but each country kind of celebrated in their own way. Now, the first layer I'd like is to address is the way that this article (laughs) is configured or whatever to make you believe that they make it very, very clear that these are pro-Russian people, by the way. These are pro-Russian Serbians that are... um, protesting the lgbt whatever i mean they just appear to be orthodox to me they're holding icons sure but if you keep scrolling down there's a whole picture of somebody holding up a russian flag and then further on down there's a picture of somebody holding up a picture of putin right next to a picture or right next to an icon of saint george i see that you see again that this is what's being presented is is the uh this is just the top layer this is just the my right wing sensibilities you know becoming indignant or whatever but um the uh narrative being presented again is is that the serbs are the serbian orthodox church is becoming violent and the police are having to do whatever they can to protect but um what i oh dang i had another point but i can't remember what it was i had something to do with the people holding up the vladimir putin like picture you know and and and, and, like i equal with the icon Oh, dang, I don't remember what it was, but there's something out that was good, too. I can't remember. But anyway, um, the fathers talked about how the Serbs suffer, like the Serbs suffer and how like they, they are still actually fighting. It's it's an interesting read um, because it, it definitely presents, again, that backwards, you know, nationalistic Serbian supreme like organization is against fighting the rights or whatever and then who's truly the militaristic power you know like what's truly happening there with like a militarist like militaristic power and going again look they're your enemies so go after them i'm so, gonna i'm gonna pull this up i'm gonna pull it up i mean i'll just say you know it's funny because the serbian church number so one people could just see <laughs> the protests right the serbian church number one um like the Serbian Church, you know, Patriarch Irene, memory eternal, may God grant him the kingdom. Uh, outspoken, held the line during the madness of 2021. And some people say he paid for it, you know, Metropolitan of Loki. See, now that's what I'm interested in. I'm sorry, Father. Yes, one second. 10 and 11 or 12. See, then does the police so this one you're saying? Yeah, so then right here there's Putin. Um this then, character is um Draza Mihalovicha. Yeah. 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 Dragul. He's you know a great, a great uh, freedom fighter. So um wow. well can, can I say something? The yeah. interesting thing about the picture of Putin that they have here. He's holding a candle. He's lighting, he's lighting a, a candle in church. church. <laughs> you could you could see back here, right? Yeah. He's in a church lighting a candle. It's not just any picture of Putin. That's the interesting part here. 
they're showing or it's meant to show orthodox leaders i think is what they're trying to show that's what it is yeah. no and I, I mean i'm I, hey i have no problem with that like um what you're saying is look how they present it as like yeah yeah out yeah. of control unhinged barbaric nationalists exactly yeah exactly mm -hmm. look at this backwards little country and like you know and weep for the the thousands of people who will now suffer under the suppressive tyranny of these you know ultra right-wing conservative christians i and like that's just the top layer i mean if i had more time and i'd read this article a little bit more i'm sure i'd have more to say but right away this is what struck me and this is how i've seen this article presented a number of times it's just as like yeah this is again you know we're, we're, it's not even that big of a deal we're not even trying to do anything that big it's just this little pride event to support people and then it talks about all the like past history of like the orthodox church and the quote-unquote like violence that has been perpetrated against the lgbtq community by the serbian orthodox church it's just i don't know it is what it is but i'm sure if i'd read it i'd have a little bit more to say about it but it's again fathers talk about like the serbians they suffer oh you're talking about patriarch irene i'm sorry father like yeah he held the line and he yeah, he paid for it so i mean hmm. and then again yeah it's that hmm. whole what you're talking I mean, about here's the thing to understand it's funny i was talking with a brother in the church the other day it's just this weird thing right it's there's a tension of like, as as a Christian, you know how the story ends, but you still have to like do your part. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Um, and I, I just think that there's like, there's just, if there's an art to this, there's an art to it, you know? So maybe that's another approach of what we're trying to do is to help people get the art of this. Like, well, how do you know when to resist, how when not to resist, whatever? Well, if you just hold the Christ and you want to like, if he's the, you know, then, then that that's that's the kind of first step. But what I'm trying to get at is it's interesting to me because there are these things where it's just kind of like there's um you know just there there's a there's a podcast it's one of the few podcasts I listen to somewhat frequently um, geopolitics and empire and um, the there's a kind of type of guest that he kind of has had been having on consistently um, the last few years, you know? And anyways, um, there, the thing that's interesting to me is I always kind of like, not always, but more often than not, I find myself with the same thought with a lot of these guests that he has on. I find this thought with, you know, people, you know, who we would say are allies, let's say whatever. Um, I can get down with you, like, okay, yeah, NPC culture, that can go across board, you know what I mean? Like, Orthodox get, like, the Orthodox who do get it, we get it, you know what I mean? There's plenty of Orthodox, quote unquote, Orthodox who don't get it, right? They're NPCs. But, okay, great, we get it, blah, blah, blah. There's things we can get down on, you know? But there's always this, like, boop, you know, there's always this place where it's just kind of like, the divergence. I, can't follow, I can't follow you there you know what i mean or like mm -hmm. or, or maybe a better way is like i wish you could follow me where i'm headed you know what i mean but what it is is there it's there is this this line this tension where it's like okay who knows but yeah that doesn't matter like being able to know what matters what doesn't make, let me excuse me let me tell you exactly what i'm talking about there's a certain narrative that's starting to come out and you'll hear more of it, which maybe not, I don't know, we'll see. Um, um, the powers that be like, you know, the um, the great reset, the WEF, like they're losing, you know what I mean? <laughs> there's a narrative that comes out of like, yeah, like like they're, they're, they're um, confounded or like, you know, like, yeah, like it's failing, what their plans are failing, like, um but you know, whatever I, whatever the terms are. Sure, I've, sure. I've seen quite a few of this if it's <laughs> not it is failing it is they they will fail they will fail this and yeah. that and and i just hang my head and i go <sighs> those are the exact people where i'm where i'm i'm hoping if you think that i'm hoping to reach you to be like don't think that yeah 
Don't be, don't be so naive. Don't be so naive. Don't, don't be so naive. <laughs> don't be so naive. <laughs> like that. That's that's another little kind of like bucket moment. You know, put put it into a bucket and send it out. Like, um, you know, I've talked about this recently in other places, and I didn't do a good very good job of it. I never do. Um, but you don't like. It's not about Klaus Schwab, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's 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 not about Fauci the Reaper. You know what I mean? It's not about. It's Trump. clearly not about Joe Biden, who it's is now Biden, who is now Joe you know Biden know I mean? as Bane. Like, what are we? I mean, you know I mean? <laughs> like, I just sometimes like, ugh, you know, it's like someone's like you could be tracking someone, and all of a sudden they're like, and yeah, the you know the whatever you know and uh okay you know it's like they throw something out the villain you know the wef and i'm like uh like, yep 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 oh no, yep. man like that that that's not it like you know they're, get, they're getting pushed back i'm like oh not really because what what is going to happen what is going to happen? And this brings us full circle to the whole psych cyclical thing, right? Capital A, capital C. There's been many antichrists, but there will be one who's coming. Um, yeah, everyone had their side. You know what I mean? You had the powers, you had the you had the, the Axis allies, well, all that good stuff, right? Okay. It's worldwide, ladies and gentlemen. There hasn't been a country. There hasn't been a nation that hasn't been touched by what has come. Um, just the very nature of the way we're living, the very nature of the fact that Cyprian's there in Saipan, we're here doing this, you're hearing my voice. Okay, God can do anything and there could be some real repentance. There's, so here, here's the thing, just to kind of have some fun, right? On the one hand, it's later than you think. Blessed Sarah from Rose, St. Sarah from Rose, his repose, his anniversary is coming up. It's later than you think, right? For sure, okay? For sure. But the counterbalance to that, because we're looking for balance and tension, is there's still a lot of repenting, faithful people in this planet right now. Mm -hmm. Like, for as, you know, as broken and proud and all the stuff that we are here in kansas city we're at least trying you know what i mean uh -huh. so there, that that's just in kansas city there's plenty elsewhere right now we're still very few right uh one there's a big church here in kansas city a huge church they have on a sunday and just and just on their one campus, more than all the Orthodox churches in Kansas City combined. Like so, we're we're small in number, right? And even like whatever. But it says in the scriptures, "Fear not, little flock, for it is the, it is the Father's good will to give you, you know, desire to give you the kingdom." So it's not about numbers. Gideon, if you read the Old Testament, Gideon and his had many men. The Lord said, "Too many, you know, hey." Whoever's going to drink from the water like a dog, get rid of them. Okay. He whittled the numbers down. God doesn't care about numbers, right? How many apostles were there? 12, and one of them was a betrayer. So it's not about numbers, okay? However, when Andrew shared all these things, I'll stand by it. What really came of 2020, whatever, I, I know it's crazy. This is where people are like, okay, Christian, Orthodox Christian with the martyr complex, blah, blah, blah. I'm just telling you spiritually, it was all about the Eucharist. It was all about starting to undermine that. It was all about like getting, like really starting to be like, okay, materialists, you know, like, oh, materialists like are, are the, you know, Soviet living church, like the version of that, that, okay, whatever, right? you're gonna start seeing more and more us being pulled out and singled out. We saw it earlier with, remember that 
you, did we talk about the hit piece that happened a couple months ago on NPR trying to say that um, we did br we did briefly. Yeah, we touched on that, right? That's just a little foretaste of just like how interesting, right? Did talk about us. Not not the uh, not us three oh. as individuals, but Orthodox. Yeah, and but there was it was saying the right it's saying it's the right wing extremists are flocking to the Orthodox Church was yeah. basically what they were saying. Basically, oh, I thought we were talking about YouTube, the Orthodox. Well, YouTube Orthodox channels are dangerous, like they That's said. That. I was talking about yeah. So so what I'm trying to get at is like if you try to go down that rabbit hole and just think of this as happening just on kind. Of a political sense of what people think you're gonna miss it it's a spiritual war because it doesn't make sense none of the things this is why the when you get together with you know people who are living in the darkness and the lies as biden said that's covert for conspiracy theorists of course yeah. right sure but like we can all we can all sit at the table okay you know Ano anarcho capitalist libertarian like we can sit at the table we could do that biker guy we could we could do that right and we'll jive we'll jive we'll jive you know where we start to diverge long before we're talking about christ you know we start to diverge we start to diverge about like they are thinking like again they're getting beat back man people yeah. are buying it blah 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 and it's just like yeah they they're thinking oh we're winning no, we're winning. Can't you see we're winning? And it's like mm. we're not winning. <laughs> we're not winning. Um, mm. We're not. We're not supposed to. Win. We're not supposed to win. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> we're, it. We're not. That's it. To, we're not supposed yeah, we're to. Yeah, we're not right? supposed to win. Um, yeah. So like that. That's the other thing is like, and if you if you don't like if you don't like hearing what I'm saying, um, you better you better check what you're going to do before you, you know, make the sign of the cross. You know, you better mm. check who it is that you, that you worship. Mm. I'm just, I'm, I'm just telling you, right. Um, yeah. 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 That one. It's like, we're not supposed to uh, saying balking at the idea. We're not supposed to win as you make the sign of the cross. So, so seems I a hope, bit uh, yeah, confused. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> I hope this is one of those moments where people go like, man, father turbo, blah, blah, blah. I hope so. Maybe not. Actually, it'd be kind of nice if it falls flat because that means that people are listening. Um, let's just be really clear about something. When you read the book of Revelation, and remember it's cyclical because it's, it's happened before, it's going to happen again, but a final time, right? Who knows when that is? I don't know, right? Wink, wink, nod, nod. Um, <laughs> the, the, the beast will, will, will be given authority over them. The dragon will be given authority over them, right? Maybe someone could clickety clickety bring it up. You know, bring it up. Just type in Book of Revelation, and they'll be given authority over over um, um, over the saints, right? And we'll have the power to 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 kill them, right? Um, so while Cibrian is looking that up, I just want to throw something out for people to consider. Okay. If you think that, and this is Kiliasm, one of my spiritual sons reached out to me today, was talking about, he's reading an Esham Kiliasm. If you think that our job here is to inaugurate and have the earthly kingdom, you are part of the problem. You're, you, are, you are going to be cannon fodder and you are gonna be set up just like the evangelical church with their Zionism and all that stuff, you know what I mean? Because, um, that temporal kingdom, first of all, the, the Christian age is coming to a close, my brothers and my sisters. With the death of the czar, we've already entered into a new time. Let's just be really clear. Mm -hmm. So the thing that restrains has been pulled, the one who restrains has in many ways been pulled back and the lawlessness is abounding because Satan is loosed again for a short time. It's already happening, we're already in it, right? Um, and that's measurable. It's measurable. There is no more Christian rulers. There is no more rule of Christian law anywhere on this planet. Okay. So if you have this idea that there's, that we're going to fight, we have this great thing, whatever. Um, what a setup. Cause if you're not prepared to have this balance of 
fighting when it's time to fight and dying when it's time to die, both literally and metaphorically, what you're being set up is for that type of denial, mm. right? It's like I was talking with someone about the rapture. And one of the, one of the biggest things about the rapture is, quote unquote, these people, these sad, these sad people who've been duped into believing this false doctrine, that they think they're going to escape tribulation. Right. How many people when they begin, and first of all, say, tell that to the Russians, tell that to the right. Romanians, yeah. tell that to the Arabs, right? Please. Yeah, too late. Too, too late. late. <laughs> um, so what happens when these people go like, what's going on? Why am I not being beamed up, Scotty? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe the whole thing's fake. Like, they, oh, right. they didn't, they don't have their line. They're, they're not ready to suffer. They're not ready to, to be baptized into the death of our Lord. Do you, do you see where I'm going with this, right? Yeah. Yep. Sure. So this, this is the thing, like, okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You being able to take a man's life doesn't mean anything to me. Mm -hmm. It means nothing to me. It doesn't prove mm -hmm. anything to me. You're not tough. You're not scary. You're nothing. Mm -hmm. It's nothing to take a man's life. You know, how easy to take a, you know how easy it is to take a man's life? A lot of cowards do it every day. That's right. Um, a lot of cowards. When you read the saints of the prison, when you read about Father George Kalachi, when you read the prologue, that's, that's bravery. That's, mm. most people can't do that. Right? That's, that's what I want to do, right? Most so, people I, so, so I have, I, forgive me, up. Father, I have revelation here. Please. Thir uh, so chapter 13, I'll start on verse four. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Like he, he will overpower the saints. Where's your, where does, where That's does it. your, where does your band of ragtag apocalyptic red dawn AR 15? Where does that fit in? Well, if you're saints, you lose. So Christ, that's the what do we sing in Pascha, right? Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down oh. death by oh. death. I know, I know, and, and this is part of the thing. You got you got people out there who they they want to talk, whatever, because they've read some books and they want to spout off like Orthodox theology, like it's dogmatic in the sense of like, you know, systematic, blah, blah. And, and there's a place for that. Don't get me wrong. Pedmonsky, I get all that. What I'm trying to get at is this thing about it, it's it's what we were saying earlier. It's the same. It's like it's not something that you file away in here. It's like if you don't have it in your heart, you don't have that line. If you're communing with the saints, if you don't if you don't know what's possible and what isn't, right? This this is this is the easiest thing, right? Because the the ones who are going to be counted faithful, they will be slain. So I was looking at this part. I think you can. Uh, uh, have you guys ever seen a Bronx Tale with Robert yeah. De Niro? Uh, I have years not. ago. Years ago. But there's a clip. The is that, is that does that is Matthew Broderick in that too? No idea. Is it Could that be. old? I think it's that old. Yeah. But it's basically a story about a, a hardworking father who's raising his son, and that son gets exposed to a, a criminal boss, like a mafia boss. Um, and the sun is torn between the two worlds. And I saw a clip from it the other day in this clip of cool pump moments from a movie on YouTube or whatever. And um, the guy basically comes in and says, the hardworking father, Robert De Niro, comes in and tells the boss, stay away from my son. Grab his son, yanks him out, blah, blah, blah. And he says, don't come near my son anymore. And they're standing out the alleyway. Him and his son are having an argument. This boy is probably 10 years old, I want to say. Like I said, I've never seen the movie. And he's basically like, the boy's crying he's like why can't i hang out with them he's like you know he's like he's a 
you know, he's a good influence. The guy's like, no, that guy's a scumbag, blah, blah, blah. And then the, the little boy's like, the working man's a sucker. And then he's like, Robert De Niro's character's like, yeah, you think that guy's, cow- like, you guys think that guy's courageous? Like, anybody can do what that guy does. Like, anybody can, anybody can pull the trigger. Anybody can kill someone. Anybody can rob. Anybody can do that. The working man's the courageous one. You think I want to get up every morning? You think I want to get up every morning and like go to work? He's yep. like, that's real courage. That's real yep. strength. And I was just yep. like, it really resonated with me. That's right. yep. so, it's that mundane. It's that mundanity again. Man. To know, to know, oh, here I go to step into the mundane once again. Yeah. Once again, you know, no, there's, there'll be no rush. There'll be no party. There'll be no celebration. There'll be no s- stories told of my heroism. There's just Please forgive me. I want to be that guy. I, I'm going to try to love my enemies. I know that sounds so crazy. Sure. <laughs> I know that's just the most ridiculous thing ever, but since so it's only at the night, he does not love his enemies and I have the grace of God. I mean, I take it seriously. I mean, that's mm. what our Lord taught. I just, not trying to be Pollyannish, not trying to be, I'm just, we're, we are affirming that's what, that's the litmus, that's the line, and it's the hardest thing in the world. That's why, if everyone could do it, you know, it'd be great. It'll be great for the whole world to be saved, but. So I think we can end on this, Father, because I don't really have a saint picked out that I could talk about. I'm sure I could, I'm sure we could find one. What does loving your enemies look like on like a day-to-day basis? Like how. On a day-to-day basis, it says in the scripture that, a man's enemies will be of his own household. Mm-hmm. So this gets us back to episode one or two, whatever. I, I'm just going to tell you, right? Um, I can't speak for anyone else, right? But I asked my dad, you know, like, hey, dad, me being the naive fool that I am, always have been. Um, what do you like better, being a dad or a son? My dad looks at me and says, son. You know how that made me feel? Right? This is a repeat, right? I said just at least I'm consistent, right? You know how that made me feel? Right? Uh, so you know what I prefer? Being a oh. father. Yeah, but <laughs> for the first time, may God grant my dad the kingdom. I, I it's like you start you get it. start getting worn down. I'm like, man, it's yeah, yeah. like in my bravado, however many episodes like father, but now I'm just like, you know. I've gotten kicked a couple times. Um, yeah. You know, uh, a man's enemies will often be of his own household, you know? And like, for me, that household's pretty big. It's, you know, mm-hmm. biological and spiritual. So like, yeah, uh, that's, that's what it looks like. You know what I mean? Because if you've, if, you've if you've gotten to a certain point, God bless you. I mean, I, there's people who like, they've done it perfectly. I have not done it perfectly. So um, I have, I have had that experience of, you know, it's tough when your own children, be they spiritual or biological, they play the role of the Judas for you. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. You know how hard that is? I still love them. Like every step that they're making, every word that they're uttering, like not only it's, it's just like you father forgive them. They know not what they do. You know what I mean? You know how hard that is? Your hand is like um, shaking because you just want to... So like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. So th- so you start there. You start yeah. there. You know what I mean? Ooh, and yeah. there's enough there. There's enough there. There's, there's enough. a lot there. There, there. I mean, there there's enough there. Like, you know what I mean? For So for those who are out there, yeah. put the time stamp on that. You know yeah. what I mean? If you want to, yeah. if you want to bypass everything, put the timestamp on that. Love that this, one, this yeah. Is that. <laughs> and that, you know, there's your episode for the day. Just fast forward <laughs> to this point, and then you know, go have a ham sandwich on me. So uh, <laughs> that, yeah, that that's that's what that looks like. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like, I'll tell you guys a story. I was finishing my theological education. Maybe I've said this before. I don't know doesn't matter and uh people have asked me like how did you know like gonna be a priest and blah blah blah. I've all these things i've all these moments whatever but there was this 
I've had these moments, right? I'll tell you guys two moments because who cares, right? Um, he's now a bishop. I think he was just made a bishop at the time. Um, but he was doing pastoral counseling. He was talking about the formation of priests and all this stuff. And so he was quoting in the gospels about Peter, do you love me? You know, Lord, you know I love you. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. You know what he said? Peter, you love me, right? Feed my sheep. Heard it a million times, but when he said that, it was not his voice. And I and I and at that point in my life. I had no, I had, you know, every man, if we're honest, every man, when he comes in first, in, comes into Orthodox church, he sees the priest, sees the cassock, because yeah, it's, it's, you sense Christ and it's desirable, right? At this point in my life, I had already gone through that phase, right? Of being like, yeah, I want to be a priest, like every guy, when he first comes into the church for the first two years, whatever, okay. I was already past that, right? And when, and when I heard that, I was like, oh. You know what I mean? Oh man, right? Why am I saying that? Because let me fast forward you like whatever, eight years before that set, you know, however long ago that was. And it became so, so clear and so plain to me. I was in the evangelical church my wife and I were in before we like left, the last evangelical church we were at. And it was just this still small voice, you know, ask me to make you holy. And I just fear, fear, fear. Um, that, that call, and I'm not comparing myself, I'm just saying everyone's had that call. St. Anthony the Great had that call when you heard, go sell all that you have and follow me. Like, there's a call that you get, the teshuva of the Lord, the shepherd, he calls you. And maybe for some of these people, this is what I'm trying to say, is that they haven't had it yet. They're attracted to the church, and that's great. I, I want you here. Everyone wants you here. But if you're here for all these reasons we were always talking about, you need to listen for this call that I'm talking about and I'm telling you how you recognize it because it's gonna have, it's gonna be terrifying to you because it's gonna be your, it's gonna be a beckoning to your death. It's gonna be a beckoning to like, to be betrayed, to suffer, to love your enemies, which will often be your household, right? So this, is a mystery and do not enter into it lightly because the one who turns his hand from the plow is not worthy. When you make that commitment, you're in. God help you if you turn back. And <laughs> yea, though he slayed me, I will still worship him as Job said. This is this is the thing. So what does it mean Amen. to love your enemy? And this is what it means. Love your enemy. At least that's what I know now. Mm. That's that's I I everyone knows this. Uh the guy who taught me how to tattoo, he was a white supremacist. I that's easy, you know. Him and his and his gang, they jumped me at a UK sub show. That's easy. That's easy to forgive. You know, it's easy to forgive someone who's, you know, asked you to take the fall and you, you go to jail. That, that's easy. I've done that too. That's easy to forgive. What's hard to forgive is someone who you've done nothing but pour yep. your heart out for. And they yep. just, yep. you know? Yes. And everyone will have that opportunity. Will they take it? that remains to be seen. Mm. Amen. Andrew? Yeah. No, I mean, I was trying to think of um, 
I was trying to think of a way to tell a story and I don't think I can. <laughs> yeah, because I think it, that's a good way to end it. Yeah, no, I think that's probably the best way to end it. And I think that anything else would probably be belaboring the point. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so we are, again, back on Spotify. What, Father? <laughs> If I had known, if I'd have known that the kids that call me Dr. Glass, no. <laughs> if if I had known, right, what would be asked of me, right? I still would have said yes. Mm. That's how I want to end it. If I had known, if I had known. Being a spiritual father and confessor means that you're gonna have to be the bad guy in the heel. You're gonna have to be. If I hadn't known that to be a biological father, you're gonna have to endure like the disdain and the hatred and the the, the loneliness of being a father, of being the mm. one who has to say no. If I hadn't known, still would have done it because this is the lie of the devil. And this is the lie that the, the abortionists take this is the lie that the people who have, who are caught in the confusion of they don't like I, I who am I? You know their identity. This this is the lie that they take that that it was a mistake. God made a mistake. God made no mistakes. God made no mistakes. You just haven't tasted life. Jesus says I came that they would have life and life more abundantly. You're eating. Mm. You're eating quick trip 7-Eleven hamburgers and God's trying to give you steak. Yeah. I still would have done it because the love that I have experienced, have I been betrayed? Absolutely. Have I been hurt? Absolutely. Mm. Am I a human being? I'm not a dispassionate holy elder. Surprise, surprise. Is it still worth it? Oh man. I've, mm. I will go to my grave being able to say I have love. Man, Beautiful. Lord have mercy. Okay, mm. well, hey guys, we're still on Spotify, <laughs> so, uh, and oh, and going by merch. Somebody had brought up in the comments that that it was that all of the merch wasn't showing up. I went to look. Lo and behold, guess what? It had all vanished as though it had never been put there. All of it, as though it had never. Yep, as though our store had never been created, as though all of the items mean? had never been created. I don't know. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's just, it looked like somebody had just gone in and just whatever the row is in the database, it just been like gone. Store was still there. All the items gone. All the designs, everything gone. Is it? I, but I, I redid them. Okay, I was going to ask. No, it's the, the, they're there now, but I just found that, yeah, well, that's interesting. Par for the course. Par for the right. course. Par for the course. <laughs> Have mercy. Um, okay. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm trying to think again. Yeah, I've been trying to get better about answering emails. Please reach out to us, Andrew at royalpath.network. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, but other than that, thank you for having a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.